In this video, I will discuss the importance of inspecting the spark plugs in an M119 gasoline V8 engine. And what I'm going to discuss here uh, applies to more than just these engines. Almost all engines during the 80s and into the 90s can suffer from similar issues if what I tell you is neglected, okay? Now, spark plugs are an interesting subject. You may be asking, uh, well, Kent, why inspect the spark plugs? I know they were recently changed. Well, well there's three reasons. Three reasons why you would want to inspect them, even if you have records. Now, the previous owner of this particular car told me that the plugs were changed about 5,000 miles ago, but I am still going to inspect them, and let me share with you the reasons why. Number one, they may be the improper plug. I find a lot of people will put, you know, so-called high-performance spark plugs or aftermarket plugs in these engines, particularly platinum plugs. And I found that platinum plugs do not behave very well in these older Mercedes gas engines. The other thing I found a lot is that the installers will put way too much anti-seize compound on the threads of the spark plugs. And that causes fouling. And number three, oftentimes I find that they're not torqued properly, or I've even found some that are loose, and they have been leaking, you know, exhaust gases and, and oil into the threads and causing them to carbon up. So I highly recommend that you inspect the plugs in your engine as well. Plugs are something that you would think, hey, how can, how can plugs be a big problem? You know, maybe they're worn a little bit, but that shouldn't create an issue with a old gas engine, particularly one that has this really high voltage spark. But you can't believe how many problems I have seen on these engines related to spark plugs. I remember years ago, uh, someone brought a 300E into my shop. They had had it to two other mechanics trying to find a problem. And the problem was his wife would be driving the car and it would just quit. It, it would just quit cold. And you know, it got to the point where his wife would not drive the car, he wanted to get rid of the car, so he brought it to me and said, can you please find out why this engine just quits? And I said, well, it's going to be a challenge because i got to make sure it quits <laughs> like he was experiencing, and then I could troubleshoot the problem because when he brought it in, it was running fine. Well, after a couple days, I was driving it, and I was able to get it to quit, and I immediately got out of the car and I checked for spark, and I, I was getting a good spark and as far as testing from the spark plug wire, and I was getting fuel pressure to the fuel distributor, so I thought, well, I'm gonna pull these plugs out, and they were, they were old plugs, they were worn, they were kinda oil-soaked a little bit, this is typical on the M103 engines. Guess what? I changed the plugs and gave the car back to the owner and he never had another problem with it. And you'd think, well, man, that's really something. How could just spark plugs cause an engine to quit like that? And other times I've had cars, particularly cars that don't get driven a lot and they've sat a long time, you'll go to, you know, try to start them and they won't start. You, you pull the plugs, you change the plugs, problem solved. So I'm going to inspect the plugs in this M119 engine. It's not a difficult job, it's a, it's a a simple job for the e DIY mechanic. There's a few things you need to be concerned about, and I'll go over those later in this video. Access is through the covers on top the valve cover. So I'm going to pull those covers, and let's pull these plugs out and see what we find. I'm going to show you the procedure on the right side of the engine. It's pretty much the same on both sides, although since you have a little more to do on this side, I'll use this as the illustration. You have your wiring harness right here that's covering over the aft section of this plastic cover, and that will also restrict you from moving the aft spark plug. So I'm going to remove this bracket right here, and with that bracket, I can lift up the harness enough that I'll be able to get the cover off and get that rear plug out. Now the first step is to remove these two plastic uh, screws and when you first look at them they look like very large number three Phillips. Well actually a number three Phillips doesn't fit very well in there. 
A small number two fits just fine, or you could use a straight blade screwdriver. And these are threaded in about three-eighths of an inch. You can see you need a, a little stubby here in the back because you have restriction on the firewall. Okay, cover comes off and that gives you access to the spark plug wires. I can tell right here that these spark plug wires have been replaced. They're not original. They don't have tags on them. And notice here that you've got a couple of them that are about the same length. So you have to be a little careful when you start pulling spark plug wires. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark these because it'll be difficult to tell which wire goes to which if I'm not careful. And the easiest way is to just mark these. If you don't have a sharpie, you can put a piece of tape on there and write on the tape. Once I have those marked, pulling out the connectors, you just pull them straight out like this. And this might be another reason why you want to remove these wires and inspect your plugs. If the previous person did not use a silicone dielectric grease when installing these boots, they can be really tough to get off. Okay, now I've exposed the holes. These are way down in here, by the way. Uh, there's something I've, I, I need to do next. We'll show that in the next scene and we'll get the tool out to show you how to get down in there and pull these plugs out. Your next step is very important. These spark plugs are located way down, recessed deeply into these holes, and they tend to collect dirt. So you're going to want to clean that out. Before I mention uh, how we're going to do that, I, I failed to talk about the importance of covering over uh, that intake manifold opening. Uh, I happen to have this magnetic tray which fits down perfectly on top of that. Make sure whatever you put on here is clean and secure because when we start blowing stuff around here on the engine, we want to make sure this is protected as well. The only way to clean these holes out you could use a very strong vacuum cleaner, but I found that compressed air is the best way. You have to clean that junk out of there or when you pull the plug, the junk's going to fall down into the cylinder. Okay, now I'll just take a look down in here, make sure they're clean. Okay, they look pretty good. Let's talk about what tools we want to use to remove those plugs. You'll need a 5 8 inch spark plug socket. There are a couple types. I prefer the really deep one on these engines, but it's not totally necessary. What is important is that you have the right length extension, particularly when you go after that rearmost spark plug. But you also want a spark plug socket that has a little rubber grommet down inside that'll hold the plug, because when you do loosen the plug up, you're going to need to pull it out of this recessed hole. I'm going to show you two examples here. I'm going to remove two plugs. We will begin by using this one that does not have a rubber piece down inside. That's been lost, very typical. And I'll show you how we'll remove that plug and get it easily out of that recessed hole. Notice here when I drop the plug socket down in here how far that plug is down in the cylinder head. I also like a, a flexible ratchet wrench because the head can clear, like for instance I can clear uh, the oil filler cap. Okay, let's go ahead. That, uh, that didn't feel too bad. Now once I loosen it up, I can just go ahead and remove the ratchet wrench and I'll start uh, turning the plug out and I'll stop about halfway out. And notice here there's the, the plug socket is not holding onto the plug. It's just coming right out. So 
Here's the little trick right here. It's a, a rubber hose. This is a 3 8 inch uh, fuel hose. I usually cut it to 6 to 8 inches in length. And I can insert the hose down in there and put it right on the end of the plug. And then I can finish turning it out. And then, look at that, voila. Comes right out of the spark plug hole. And right away, I can't believe it. I mean, you would think that I pulled these plugs out before I started shooting this video. But right away, I'm looking at something I do not like. Uh, looks like the plugs are fairly new, and they are the correct plug, but this here, this stuff on the threads, I'm not happy with at all. We'll talk about that a little bit more later in this video after we get the plugs out. Now, let's use the long socket to, to remove the second plug. I'll get this on here. Okay, we'll set the ratchet. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Look at that. That plug wasn't even tight. <laughs> oh, gee. Now, since this socket has that rubber insert, I should be able to turn the plug all the way out. Once it's loose, I can carefully lift it right out of the hole. Okay, look at that. Look at how wet that plug is from having been loose. Okay, let's talk a little bit more in detail in the next scene about the condition of these plugs and why I'm concerned. Here are the two plugs that I removed from the car. Upon initial inspection, you would think that the cylinders were leaking engine oil. Look at how wet those threads are. Uh, this is the first one I pulled out. It's not quite as wet as the second one, which was loose in the head. But watch, this is not engine oil. This is something else. It's like... <laughs> It's not really like any anisease compound I've seen. It's almost like uh, a Permatex engine gasket sealant, but it's very gooey and very sticky. So I, I'm going to clean this off. It might be a you know some type of uh, anisease compound I haven't seen before, but if you look closely along the tip here, you can see kind of the discoloration. And looking down in here, you can see a little bit of buildup, probably from this excess, whatever it is, uh, having leaked out into the combustion chamber. And then this one here is, is wet. It, it's real wet because this is the one that was loose. So the plugs are right. They're the Bosch copper tip standard plug. These are the ones that seem to perform best in these older Mercedes gas engines. But two out of the three things that I was concerned about actually happened in this engine. So I'm going to clean these up and I'll show you a few tips about putting them back into the engine. Well, I have these first two plugs cleaned off. And this was quite a mess to clean these up. And not only did I have to clean these up, but I had to clean the threaded holes down in the block. Now that was fun. You know, I'm going to reinstall these and I'm not going to use any anti-seize compound. And I know there's quite a controversy out there about anti-seize. You know, a lot of the old timers, they wouldn't think of putting plugs in without using anti-seize. And yet a lot of manufacturers today are recommending against it. And it has a lot to do with the sensitivity of these new computerized cars. You know, if you have an old, real old car, that's maybe in a high moisture rust environment, you might want to put a little anesthesia, but don't put a lot on, just put a little teeny dab. But what's happening with these newer cars is anesthesia will trigger a check engine light. It'll cause a misfire in the plug and that'll, that'll trigger a check engine light. Or they even, uh, if it's enough anesthesia, it can work its way down in the exhaust and foul up uh, the oxygen sensor and then you'll have another 
check engine light. Uh, come on. So some of the new plugs, by the way, have, have a special coating on them that will prevent seizing. So if you have a newer car, you know, that's late 90s and newer, I personally don't use anti-seize on them at all, particularly if you're going to be the one that's going to be maintaining the car. So I have these plugs cleaned up. I'm just going to do these two for the purpose of this video, and then I'll have a lot of cleaning up to do on the other ones later on. And I just want to show you in conclusion a couple tips that'll make it easier to install these plugs in your engine. Just wanted to show you how I cleaned those threads out down in the head using a brush. Look at that. Look at, look at the amount of crud I pulled out of those threads. Now, what I do is I do one, then I have to clean the brush, and then do the second one and clean the brush and so on. But that's about the only way you're going to uh, clean those threads at this point. Now, here's, here's the plug ready to go in. And I am going to use you know, you could use the socket and try to drop it down in there, but I am going to use the same hose that I used to remove the plug with to insert them. There's a couple reasons I love this hose. Number one, you can really feel it. You do not want to cross thread these plugs going into these heads. And by using the hose, you can set it down in there. So it accomplishes two things. It allows you to set the plug in place and then it also allows you to start the plug. Using the hose, you can feel it. Literally, you can feel the thread start to bind if you're cross-threading it in. Once it's in, you pull back on it. Okay, it started. Now I can just use the hose to spin it all the way in until it sets down on the ceiling gasket. Now, if it doesn't want to go in, if you're forcing it with a hose, there's something wrong. It either means the threads are gummed up or something, but you, you use this hose to help you feel it in and then to determine that, yes, your threads are okay. Look at how simple that is. You just plug that on, holds the plug, set it in place, feel it start those first couple threads, and then just spin it the rest of the way in until it bottoms out. This is even faster than using a wrench. Okay, now the plugs are in. I am going to use a torque wrench to tighten them. We've got the torque wrench set to 18 foot-pounds. Now there's a little bit of technique you want to use on this torque wrench. You just don't want to rapidly tighten it down. You want to go real slow. And what you're feeling is the gasket is crushing. Okay, there's the click. Now I'm going to hold it about 5 to 10 seconds, then I will release, and then I will gently confirm the torque. See that it's going to move a little bit more because of that crushable washer. Hold, release. Okay, second one. Once again, do it slowly. Click, hold, release, repeat. Okay, those two plugs are done. I'll go about doing the next <laughs> uh, six of them. And in the next part, notice I've already got the plug wires out. That's great because in the next part in this series, we're going to remove these valve covers and inspect the camshafts, rockers, chains, and oiling tubes.